Let's talk about um, Tower Records and the, the notion of the long tail. Do you remember Tower Records? Oh, I do, with a lot of affection. Do you remember the choice that you were given in Tower Records? Well, you'd, you'd spend maybe three or four hours in there. You wouldn't, you wouldn't just breeze in and out. You'd be in there forever. <laughs> yeah, and your student day exploded when you went there as a university student like myself. Um, do you have any idea how much choice was offered in a Tower Records store? Ooh. Well, no, I could only guess at it, but I would have thought it was hundreds of thousands. So I was very fortunate because I wanted to understand what I call the Tower Records long tail. That is, we have this long tail theory, which came to light in 2004, very importantly, after Tower Records went bankrupt, which said Walmart offers no choice. Rhapsody, the first online music streaming service, offers lots of choice. Watch people, demand will move from the head down to the tail. Essentially, what Chris Anderson in that blog article said is if you offer people more choice, they will take that choice and demand becomes more democratically spread. The tail lengthens more choice, it fattens more demand for that choice. And what I got frustrated with was people seem to think that the time stood still pre-2004. Like there was nothing else but Walmart. Well, there was lots of other things but Walmart. I spent a vast chunk of my life going into record shops. I got a vinyl collection, which is way too big for the house that I live in. And, you know, it's, it's part of my life. We need to understand choice pre-2004, pre-famous wired essay. Let's go back. Let's go back. So I went back to Tower Records to start examining the choice that they offered. Now, around about, let me just get the year right, 2013, 2014, I got to speak to Ross Solomon, the founder of Tower Records, on the phone. He's no longer with us now, but an incredible chat with him. And I said to him, did you optimize a key number of choice to offer the consumer when they wandered into your store? Like we have Dunbar's number for social networks that you can't mm. hold any more than 150 proper friendships or relationships. Um, was there a sort of Dunbar's number that you could apply to Tower Records? He said, yeah, I did. I had, a, I had quite an important number. It's like, tell me, because you know, I could do some mathematics around this. He said, basically, with the exception of outlier stores, I think Times Square was Times Square, New York, you know, a super large store, but the typical Tower Records store would have 40,000 unique album titles available to buy whenever you walked in. Boy, that is big. Yeah. You know, it's 400,000 songs if there's 10 songs in an album. 40,000 unique album titles whenever you walked into Tower Records in Argyle Street in Glasgow were there ready to explore. That's a ton of choice. Now, mm. very important that we quote Barry Schwartz here in the famous book, The Paradox of Choice, where he famously said, some choice is better than none, but it doesn't necessarily follow that more is better than some. We're in a world today where I can exclusively tell you that streaming services are ingesting 75,000 new songs every single day. That's broadly similar to the inventory that the British music industry released in one calendar year during the 80s, happening every single day. Tomorrow, there's going to be 75,000 new songs competing for the attention of the 75,000 released today. The world has gone mad, but pause for a second. Mm. Ross Solomon offered us lots of choice in the late 90s and early 90s before he went bankrupt. So what I do in the book, I say, well, how much would that choice serve today? So let's plot on audio streaming and video streaming services what the top 40,000 albums would make up of overall demand. And the answer is between 88 and 95%, which is just yeah. jaw dropping. So he found it. <laughs> yeah. If the streaming services didn't ingest 75,000 songs a day, didn't boast about hosting 70 million tracks, which you're interested in very few of them, you know, instead offered the top 40,000 albums, they would still retain 95% of their business. I mean, that's looking around corners right there. Some choice, is better than, <laughs> <laughs> some choice is better than none, but it doesn't necessarily follow that more choice is better than some. And I think the next 10 years, we're going to see a kind of an about turn in this journey of media, not just music, podcasts. You know, two podcasts are being produced every minute right now. Not episodes, new podcasts, two every minute. So that's been about 100 since we started talking, mm. right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to turn. We're going to need filters. We're going to need controls. We're going to need a way of separating the killer from the filler. I, I really think that's going to dominate the next 10 years of media. 